Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, sorry about the late start. Um, got some midweek errands to run and um, ran a little late. Oh, I haven't even taken the tape off my cam yet. Yeah. Tape. Yeah. Sorry about that. Let me just uh, dust myself a little bit here. Ah, <sighs> yeah, like I said, Aaron's running late, so um, happy Valentine's Day, like I said, we're gonna be doing this today, as you can see, uh, the Colonel Sanders, uh, the KFC dating sim, because, well, I want to, let me just uh, fix something here, I'm just gonna move myself up a little bit here. There we go. I think I'm all ready to go. Ready and rearing to start. Okay. Where's the game? There's the game. Game. I have not played this before. Um. I mean, I don't know if I have a continue. I may have started at one point, but never really played it. Settings. I'm gonna turn the music volume down a little more down. Just be on the safe side. Okay, new game, I guess. Okay, that was my name. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with my first name. Chicken biscuits. I want chicken. I want biscuits. I want fried chicken. That looks tasty. I want. I want that. Can Can I have that? Can I, can I have that for my dinner, please? Whoops. Okay. I want that for my dinner, please. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest studio or student apartment. Oh, very modest. I like a boy band, it looks like, and I like a, a chicken anime, I guess. My shoes are blue, though. They're not red. I don't have red shoes. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. And, and I don't play tennis. I don't. I don't play tennis. Or you could wake up now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I, you can't hear that. Oh, that is... Oh. That, 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 oh. I'm just going to smack it. Make that clock. Laying in, laying in bed, or lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. I have never, not even started this game before. What does that chicken do? I'm just gonna turn those sound effects down a little bit more. Your mind begins to wander. Um, mind, get back here. I think my mind's, mind's wandering away. It wandered away. I have no mind anymore. It just ran out the window. Broke free. Oh. This is why you don't keep ambulable, ambulatory brains in jars. Y you have to make sure the least they're chained down first. Mm. Who will be there? What will you cook? What will you wear? Time is beginning to fly by, and your imagination is getting away from you. I need to take this seriously. Not let the mind wandering away affect my duties as a student. 
I'd better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist. Teeth brushed, hair combed, pits, pits. Oh, armpits, deodorized. Nothing can stop me now. You confidently grab a biscuit, start out the door, and head up to class. What? Just a biscuit? What in school? You like a good meal. Let's throw an egg and some cheese on that biscuit. I mean, for goodness sakes, man. That's what you need to get your blood flowing. No, I, I, need, I need cheese and egg on that biscuit. Cheese and egg. Maybe a little bit of sausage. Maybe. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Looks nothing like any school I ever went to. You know, you know not many schools have blue skies around them. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. 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 She is the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. And that's not even her school outfit. She just wears that all the time. Good morning, Hikaru. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Not really. Actually, I'm... Because I sure am excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. The Just said, this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What? If I fail! Ah, uh, classic Miriam. Raised by Master Chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. I just had a dry biscuit that I had left sitting on my desk from last night's dinner. Eh. Yeah. Ever since we were little babies playing together, and you rescued me from that quicksand. I just need a second to process that. The thought of a quicksand box. A quicksand box. What kind of preparation would even go into such a thing like that? I mean, would you have to dig like a big pit? And is it like movie quicksand or real quicksand? Was it was it dramatic? Did she have to break down a tree branch just to get me out of that quicksand? Box. I just I just need to process this. This is this is breaking my brain. It's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're gonna do great. <laughs> but with the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three-day-only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. So the semesters are only three days? I mean, even the Sims, you get a week. Sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. I did not need to know that. I did, I... I did not... Is this the game that's going to break my brain? Is a Kentucky Fried Chicken dating simulator going to be the thing that breaks... Breaks my brain. Probably. Uh, should you pep talk her or change the subject and give her some relief?
I'm going to um, I'm going to change the subject, I think. Yeah. So, gossip. It's hard to see Miriam like this, and frankly, quite exhausting. Rather than dwell on her anxiety, you try to change the subject to something more interesting. Like, um... The, um how about that weather? I, I don't know gossip. All summer you've been hearing rumors about a dreamy... Enigmatic mystery student who is enrolled at this school. Yeah, that's a little worrisome, but you'll be fine. Now, what about this hottie uh, I mean, mystery student we've read about on the school message board? Any details? Uh -huh. That worked. Oh, get this. I heard his name is Harland. And he's no ordinary student. I heard. I don't pass this on. But I heard... Harland... will dip his hand... into the mashed potatoes... at restaurants... and just... eat it with his hands. Mm -hmm. Forcing them to remake all the mashed potatoes from scratch. Yeah. They say he has powers. He's had them ever since he was born. From an egg. If he's not a giant chicken, he better be a giant chicken. Or a dinosaur. I want a T Rex chef. An egg like a dinosaur? A chicken? Don't be ridiculous. But the thing about having powers, that would line up with some of the other rumors I've heard. Like. I heard he once fought a bear with just a smile. The bear won. You both sigh thinking about a student so handsome that the laws of physics don't dare apply to him. Dreamy. Ah. <clears throat> Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons. Not my measuring spoons. You. Pickle. It's Ashley, you're our rival. She's totally evil. But you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants. And she knows it. Mmm. Hello. Ashley. If that is your real name. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Hikaru's shins alone. They are perfectly normal to know they're chicken shins. I have, I have chicken shins. I'll honestly admit that my shins are those of a chicken. I had my shins replaced with those of a chicken 27 years ago on this very day. Thank you very much. Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for the fact that's actually Ashley. But she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone else. Yeah. Why don't you just remove letters and add an apostrophe? Works for me. What? If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. No, no, I have chicken shins. I, I, I honestly, I do. I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's just something I'm making up for a joke either. I totally do. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the cod, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man-Man. 
He has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working out his glutes while he stylizes his hair. No lie. They're rocking glutes. <clears throat> Van Van. You rang rang. If that's it, I, I really hope that's a hat. Because that hair looks... Very uncomfortable. Honestly, I mean, very uncomfortable. I really... That's his hair. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have just been close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I can't believe that University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, would ever allow people like you to attend as students. Oh, I can believe him, I mean, honestly. You know, they're just jealous of that leather jacket and that belt. Mm, that belt. Got a very nice belt. I want that belt. Spikes and all. I know, right? You'd think they'd just hand us our diplomas now. Or maybe hire us on as professors. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. Within, with the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. And then you shove them in a quicksand box. Now, is that like a regular sandbox? You know, with with just the like the, the the wood, you know, the wooden sides. That, you know, it's easy enough for a child to step in, and it's just quicksand. Or is it a magic box that you open up, and then all of a sudden the quicksand grabs you and starts sucking you inside? The world would want wants to know. Let's go, Miriam. <laughs> See you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. He's the, he, he's the one I think they have the rumors about. That's a weird sound. I love that sound. I want to marry that sound. Not that sound. You. That was not a good sound. The other sound was better. Oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. Okay. Thank you. I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. And he was named after his Pop Pop Pop. And he was named after his Pop 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 Could someone like this also be a student school? He must be one heck of a chef. Chef. Also his name clearly says Bob in lowercase. But I guess he's rating it upside down. No, he just put it on upside down. Hi, Pop. I'm Hikaru. So, are you gonna make me hold this door all day? Poor kid. Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? You can have him. I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. Okay, I was taking a look around the classroom here. See, you need to know geometry to make fried chicken. You do. You need to know this to do this. He's at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep to themselves, busy chit-chatting. 
A scruffy looking pooch takes his place at the podium in front of the class. Adorable. I do not want a dog teaching me how to cook. Because to be honest, that would be very unsanitary. I do not want to be picking dog, you know, be sweeping up the dog hair while I'm trying to cook something. Because, you know, I gotta be focused on, on that soup. I do not want that milk to curdle. But I'm sweeping up all this dog hair. And no, 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 no. I, I, I don't want that. I don't want that at all. Sprinkles. Okay, that's cool. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? He's obviously the professor. I mean, honestly, look at him. He's got glasses on. He's got glasses on a spatula and a tie. He must be the professor. Oh, and he's got a pen in his pocket. You don't. You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CAO of... Uxol. Yes, Uxol. That's what I'm calling it. Uxol. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and a little and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. <clears throat> oh, I want to go to the other dog's nuts. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. It's a KFC simulator. KFC is not fine dining. And honestly, if I had to pick between KFC and fine dining, I'd pick KFC. I, 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 I like fried chicken. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. Oh, great. Now I'm going to have to sweep up these while I'm making the soup. Today's just not my day. It isn't. It's, 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 it's just not my day. Pop, I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then, he walks in. Who? I don't see anybody. You're immensely swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Oh. I get it. He's a villain I must defeat because everyone knows. That those with goatees are evil. Mm. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. If I can't use the arrow keys, I have to use the mouse. It's him! It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor. Yeah, you know, sorry, Professor Dog. Before he can finish his sentence. Please. <laughs> Call me Colonel. Like Colonel of Corn. Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your bow. You feel like everyone is looking at you. You're not entirely wrong. Oh. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. Maybe we should open that window back up before a faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. How about I take that hair and beat Ashley with it? What? 
What? You both know my name. You two both know my name. We're in the same kindergarten class. And what is with all your really weird insults? Take a moment to clean yourself up. I guess. It's a good thing you didn't forget about that deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. Dot, dot, dot. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and sets some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School Academy of Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. Notable graduates include, uh, Ronald McDonald. The Burger King. Wendy. The Dairy Queen. And a train that makes sandwiches. Those are the only ones I can really think uh, that are around here, at least. Alright, I got to do with the other fast food places. Oh, and some guy named Taco Bell. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Where I have to sweep up these uh, petals and, um... Dog hair. Wonderful. Just then another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a really good summer. I really miss... Okay. I like him. Quiet! Late for class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on a fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Yeah, look at him. He's a cook. Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in the school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Poor kid. Let that <clears throat> let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here in time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student Sprinkles is referring, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. Bzzz. Wow, the, the graphics. Uh, the class bursts into laughter. That's mean. Poor Clank. Look at him. He's doing his best. With only one, you know, somewhat recognizable thing as an eye. He's just doing his best. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Okay, I did deodorize. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of your... I hate this school so much. You never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkles' reputation for being smart is smart but tough is well known. Uh, you decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? Uh, beef? What? No peanut butter treat? But the peanut butter treats the best treats. My dogs love they they love their dog uh, the peanut butter treats. Here, chicken snack will work. You reach beneath the apron and return a chicken snack with return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkles go eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite I figure it's a chicken I don't know. It's a, it's a chicken game. Well, well, well. I think there might be some competition for a new star student. 
The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy. This game is, um, making me want to, ugh, ha. I wish I had hand tracking right now so you could see it. Ugh, gross. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but you pay, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat, dog treat flavors on them at all times. Okay, settle down, young chefs. Uh, take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Two options remain. Miriam? Or Harlan? I don't trust Harlan. He's got a goatee. I don't trust him at all. Sit by best friend. You move to take your seat by Miriam. Honestly. <clears throat> best friend or guy with goatee. You take seat with best friend. Sorry. I'm so glad to have you near me to support me through this class. Of course, you're my best friend. Who else would I sit by? Plus, I don't trust the man with the goatee. Colonel Sanders, he has such a magnetic personality, and there's a seat open right next to him. If you had sat there, you may have not got to know him a little better. I don't trust the man. I'd never sacrifice our friendship. Besides, I'm sure I'll get a chance to talk to him later in the semester. I've got, I've got <coughs> three whole days. That's like a lifetime. So you say. But now that Miriam mentions it, that Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. Don't tell me how I feel, Kane. He's got a goatee. And I know... That people with goatees are evil. I've watched Star Trek. I know what mirror universe people look like. And they have goatees. I rest my case. Okay, not all of them, but you know. <clears throat> as soon as you settle into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. <clears throat> Think fast. It's time for a pop quiz. Pepsi. Cherry vanilla Pepsi. That's my answer. Yay, a quiz about me. I know nothing about pop, though. This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for life at culinary school. <clears throat> Keep your knife sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Okay, my joke answer is, oh my God, a word problem in math. How do I hate those so much? Oh, ho, ho. As somebody who's worked in many restaurants in the real world. Extremely important. <clears throat> That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken as to feather. Night vision goggles or slam dunk. Real answer is this one. I know that much. But now I'm just picturing slam dunking a chicken and underneath the, underneath the net is a quicksand box. That's right. See, I chose Feather. I've chosen the right answers. 
<clears throat> what is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? Chemically oversized fork. It doesn't really fit in your mouth that well. A meat tenderizer. Once again, doesn't really fit in your mouth that well, but it is very satisfying when you're smashing things with it. Or a spork. I haven't really seen that many sporks at KFC recently. <clears throat> but I haven't been into K KFC recently either, so that could be the problem. <clears throat> That's right. Uh, what kind of food is best for a broken heart? A pancake that looks like a silly face. Okay. I, I can see that. Camel meat? Eh. Depends on whether or not you like it or not. I've never had it, so I can't say. Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. That's the one I would go for. That's right. Is Sprinkles a good boy? No. Yes. He's a talking dog that teaches at culinary school. He is the best boy. No. No. The answer is option D. He's a corgi. He is the best boy. That's right. Your total score is 5 out of 5. Perfect. Ashley probably only got 4. Wow. Be honest. Did you cheat? I've worked in restaurants before, man. You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your, sc you tally your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful... Br oh, great. He's got x-ray specs. He can see into my head. <laughs> no. 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 This game's breaking me, man. Hot diggity, Hikaru. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. <clears throat> May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Well, that is a very important announcement. I kind of want to get something to eat. I am very hungry. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance rafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. I'm getting really hungry. I got a quick peanut butter and jelly before I started, but... Oh. My belly's still like... You need food. Student, everyone, can I have your attention? Oh, I feel sorry for this poor guy. Is it about lunch? Okay, I'm getting running out of places to click. It's not going to be clicking on you guys' faces. No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an... This isn't about you, Colonel Sanders. Hey, I was. It's about lunch. what I tell you? Goatee. Evil. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. He's interrupting this 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 poor guy right here. Right here. He's interrupting this poor poor guy right here by being a rude meanie head talking about food. Jerk. Colonel Sanders is a jerk. Pass it on. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh. I'm not liking the characters in this game at all. They're being mean to this guy. 
Quit being mean to him. Mean heads. Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said, shh. In honor of the new semester, I prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. That must be the sm okay smell I smelled. Indeed. Did his head get smaller, or is it just me? Nothing looks proportional in that image. Well, maybe. The head just doesn't look proportional at all. Indeed, that smell. You hold br your breath waiting to see what the food this mysterious student has created. You've heard he's, that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this? I see nothing. It should have been something like, you know, right here. Right here. <clears throat> Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. It contains... The glimmer, or its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket? With chicken? What a novel concept. Never been done before. Colonel Sanders just went to KFC and got some food. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, Stop thinking and start eating. For years I've been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. Is this... Is this game a commercial? I am beginning to think this game is a commercial. Something tells me that this game is a commercial. I think it's a commercial. Just saying, it's probably a commercial. <sighs> well, I'll counter that with just one MSG. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. It's MSG. What? You think we want your stupid secret recipe, huh? You know, dude? Pshaw. Nah, my dude. Nah. I'm just, uh, drafting a last will and testament case, uh... One of those ingredients is, a uh, poison. Got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else, else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait, and, you wait to see what Singer Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just, like, writing in my diary. Dear Diary... Uh, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry a chicken so tender. Well, you can have him. You both eat him. I mean, look at that mustache. And the fact that he shut up that other student. Wouldn't let that student finish his thought. Just, you know, and, and apologize for his tardiness. Been to school three years. Three years. Three years of three-day semesters. Do you know how many, how long he's been here? How many semesters he's been here? Way too many. Way too bloody many. And he just, he just really shut him up. I want to go throw Colonel Sanders in the quicksand box. Being a jerk. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is great and destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. 
Oh, please. Well, Van, Van, the man-man, if you don't want any, I'll take his. Well, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. How do you... How do you do that with your hair, anyways? That's got to be lots of gel. You would think with that amount of gel, it would be unmovable, but yet it moves. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now, there's enough for everyone. Uh, please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Okay. One of the secrets of KFC, and I've never worked in a KFC, but one of the secrets of KFC is the fact that I don't tell anyone. They have pressure fryers. They fry the chicken in a pressure cooker, basically. Instead of water, it's oil. It makes it really nice and juicy. Because that juice has nowhere to escape and it cooks it really, really quickly. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Oh, great. Not again. Alone with your taste buds gripping your drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Will this get me out of this um, horrifying reality that I'm stuck in? Where I have a dry biscuit for breakfast and there's quick sand boxes and hair that should be so gelled that it shouldn't move. Moves? And that somebody would name their kid Van Van the Man Man? I want, I, I want out of this reality. I'm just going to focus my mind, though. Be nice. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt? No, no, probably MSG. Pepper? Uh, too obvious. Oregano, basil, but there's something else. Something dark, something spicy. You dig deeper, deeper, deeper. It's MSG. Yes, even deeper still, until you find it. Could it be... Monosodium glutamate? He really did it. How bold, how adventurous to use. Monosodium glutamate? You try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize that this information was meant to remain a secret. And yet, now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. I do not feel responsible. I take no responsibility. Not my fault. Not my fault. No, not my fault at all. Nope. Nope, not my fault. As you look around, you realize everyone in the room is consumed by by the lunch. No one noticed that you've traveled through time and space. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time alone with Colonel Sant. I wouldn't. Where's my spork? I'm gonna. I don't trust him. He's gotta go tea. It's my only option. Ugh, this game's depressing me. No, 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 Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wonder if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? How bold of you to come out and ask. It's an idea I've had for a new combination of flavors that will make me a, my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. 
No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret, in fact. I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give up, but give it up easily. But it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? You've got Moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whip whispers. Oh, and he forgot to brush his teeth. Phil. Oh, oh gross. Oh. Just one ingredient. But you can't tell. I use... Monosodium glutamate. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Monosodium glutamate. So I just keep doing that. I'm sure this is my mystery though, though. Wow, you never guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. Uh, you can buy mono MSG at the grocery store. And MSG definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before. So now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders it has disappeared. While well, everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. Sounds like you have big plans. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I'm up in the tree here. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Um, alone together for the first time, you figure out now is the perfect moment to show, show your personality to him. Okay, I'll, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to take a quick break, get something quick in my stomach again, because I'm still very hungry. And get something out so see you on the flip side okay so I got I got just grab something quick very something sticking in my stomach here let's see if I can find it here I'm looking through a cookbook nice this is an old cookbook I have its pages are Browned with age. The title page. Here, let me see. This is. Which printing is this? It doesn't say which printing this is. First printing. 1993. This book is over 30 years old. Just saying. This book is old enough to vote. But. The KFC. Recipe. Is salt. Pepper. And MSG. This is a clone cookbook. It's a. Um, for creating clones of. Um. You know, various foods like, um, you know, a Whopper or an Almond Roca or um, Ben and Jerry's ice cream, you know, stuff like that. So it's not going to be exact, but to get something probably that tastes similar to the original recipe chicken, it's uh, salt, pepper, and MSG. I would probably add some other stuff in there too just to give it to look like it's got fancy stuff in there, but yeah. So I'll be modest but thoughtful. Well, I just want to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery, it was perfect. Now admittedly, I do like fried chicken. Just saying. 
I appreciate the, com- the compliment, Hikaru. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met a day, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. We step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student has an o- gets an oven and all the tools and greens they could need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh, no. We have to show our stuff. <gasps> what if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything. Except maybe kisses to the crowds of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny fruit creations. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself. No, I would cook with Miriam. She's my bestie. This game is not letting me choose. Let's cook with Miriam. Hey, Colonel, you want to tackle this lesson as a team? Team of two, that is, me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Sure, Cairo, I'll prepare. Without you as a partner, Miriam left us standing alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Pop, hello, new partner. Clank. Beep, boop, bzzz. You gotta see that face. You know what? You gotta see this face better. Honestly. Take Clank. Take Clank. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen. But I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward. But that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to p- ask to be Miriam's partner? That's the problem. Pop, who she thought was kind of cute. Or Clank, who is making that face. Clank. I'm saying Clank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam would be, will be partnering with Clank today. I mean, honestly. That face, though. That face. Let's try and get a screenshot of that face. I love that face. It's okay, I already ate! It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. That face. I love that face. That's the best face ever. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about it. He's got a face, look. Eyebrows. Eyes. This. A mouth. Tissue? I hardly know ya. <laughs> Clank shudders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus your, on your own cooking classwork. Alright you two, for today's lesson, I'm going to keep it sim- simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island, it takes two flints to make a fire, you get the idea. Which dish did you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Uh, steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. No. Uh, use octopus to, will blow Cat, Colonel Sanders mind. Octopus is really good. Octopus is really tasty. I have had octopus. 
your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. That would blow his mind all right. You know, to be perfectly honest, my grandma made really good mashed potatoes and gravy. And even better fried chicken. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes and gravy. I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? I gotta keep my eye on him. He's got a goatee. And he's evil. Aislea. We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business. And you better keep your fingers off my man. Did someone call for me? Ah, uh, no, please, Van Van. While well, I'm over here crushing Hikaru's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old... Friends. Poor Van Van. Being mean to Van Van, my man man. Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van, uh... Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? <clears throat> Actually, no. It looked like Hikaru was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you'll be able to catch up to my level. Ha! <laughs> Doubt it. Don't be rude, fan fan. That's it. That's it. I was going to go after the student with no name. He's mysterious. But I think Van Van needs a new friend at the very least. Poor Van Van. Look at that face. You mean to Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel... If you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complementary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for the colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Something tells me I just want to play a better game. No offense to this game, but... I'm like, like other options. Like, uh... Well... You know, talking to somebody at maybe, um... You know... Some level of authority about how unsafe those shoes are. I mean... Look at this shoe. Just, just look at this shoe. You should not be wearing this in a professional kitchen. You shouldn't. There's like no traction on them. And you're going to slip and slide all over. If some, you know, if some busboy spills something, you know, kind of greasy on the floor, you're going to go wee and then thud on your back. And it's going to hurt, like, a lot. And if you were carrying any knives or anything, well, you're going to the hospital. Those shoes are unsafe. I would complain about those shoes. Those shoes aren't very unsafe. Very, very unsafe. But then again, that watch could get caught on things, Colonel Sanders. You might want to, you know... Take that off. It might be safer. 
I'm just saying. In the kitchen, safety first. It's obvious. Obvious. Miriam. You turn to Miriam, and as soon as you find her, it's <coughs> find her. She senses it and looks back. This girl's friend in need, right? Are is second to none. She immediately comes running over. Is someone threatening my friend? I will destroy them. I actually think that Ashley and Van Van were just leaving, leaving you in the dust via 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 my skills as a chef, perhaps. But stepping away from this con competition, you are sorely mistaken. Miriam, you are a loyal friend, but Hikaru is my partner for today's activity. You look for Sprinkles and hope that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy nature. Stature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of moment, your hands may have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture, with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. I, I think my granny, um, if I remember correctly, she used uh, a mixer. You know, not 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 like. She may have used her uh, Cuisinart stand mixer, but I think she was using the hand mixer. It's really good potatoes. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. Oh no, the evil man's gonna... Oh, he's evil! The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. It's gotta go, T. He's evil. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. St time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up, and when you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling a sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Food fight! What? Van, Van, do something, something. Scooping up a fingernail, Van, Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Hikaru. We do not waste food in the broom, broom kitchen or cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Back away very slowly. Very, very slowly. Very slowly. Van Van rushes back over a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy. Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my speciality. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky saltwater sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. That looks delicious. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It's I who will have the first bite. 
and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about the dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the actors were rushed. It may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. And someone put a sheet over him. It killed him! Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped and... Back away slowly. 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 Pop winces in pain for just a moment. Then, it's almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Whoopsie. Tastes like poison. The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd as they are motionless as statues. Whoops. The class bell rings, usurping the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. See, that's why you try new things, like octopus. And octopus is very tasty. Very tasty. I have had it. And I enjoyed it. You can thank me later. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. I think that you're taken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense. Poor kid. Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. You gonna walk him home? Oh, that may be sweet. Maybe he's gonna walk this poor student home. I mean, he just died. Oh, wait a second. He just died. In a kitchen. Nobody touch any more of the food. We've got a dead body. This is a biohazard situation. The restaurant is closing down at least for the next week. For deep cleaning. Of course. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him, in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell you you're de tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yesikaru? There's something I need to tell you. I'm in love with Van Van the Man-Man. Sorry, I'm all tabbing and I keep all tabbing. Look at this. We make a cute couple, don't we? Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see? When I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working towards that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also lifting a ton of weights. Like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts, and our, that our souls may grant them like witches floating in a shooting star. Hey, no, I, you... Shut up, I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. 
Are we forgetting your cooking literally killed the guy? You can't prove that. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long, sad sigh. Yeah! Yeah! We're all gonna forget about him now, aren't we? No, we gotta have this sweet little love. We gotta, we gotta have this love story with this, with, with this sweet boy with way too much hair gel and too many muscles and Mr. Evil over here with the goatee. Yeah. I'm keeping my eye on you, Harlan. I'm keeping my eye on you. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. The spork monster. The spork monster is here to fight a hero. Nope. Okay. The game will not break you. The game will not break you. The game will not break you. Do not let the game break you. You can handle this. You can handle this. You can handle this. Oh, you can handle this. Van Van. Go fight the Spork Monster, Van Van. I believe in you. I uh, think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds! How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid, be very afraid of me, because I am a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? Before we can discuss, any, discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? I like this. I'm going to defend. I like defending. You decide to defend. Which defense will you choose? Trepidation. You close your eyes tight, but then open just one l enough just to squint and see the spork monster across the battlefield. For some reason, this makes you feel more prepared for what comes next. Spork monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Fat lot of good defense did. You decided to go on the tack. Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monster won't forget this. Spork monster focuses on mesh mine and draws in the energy from the Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Attack. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack do you choose? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Ooh, you teletensile. Tensile. You take two damage. If I take more damage, I'm not going to survive the battle. Attack! Cook with love. Spork monster is oozing cheese sauce into the lawn of the quad. I wonder who's going to have to clean this, that up. Pop. Feeling vulnerable, spork monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Final villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. Nope. <sighs> nope. Nope. I'm not sure I can handle much more of this game. I'm not. Okay. 
Okay, I can do this. I can do this. The clock is my sanity. The clock is my sanity. Pot pie power pinch. Ah, uh, to ten damage. Spork monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Spare this wretched beast. You imagine it tamped down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back like you said. The spoke monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears to be first a cookbook, but upon closer inspection it's much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have been last name to have sent it out is Borco. Hmm. Barco, that name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my Colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, sprinkles are also instructing your love. Dreams are weird. See, that's the most normal thing about this game so far. I feel sorry for that kid. I feel sorry for the kid. I do. I really do. You will awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories? Or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders' food cooking yesterday. Or it's Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe you really used pepper. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? Probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she lodges into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might like Clank. Like him? Or like like? I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Oh, dish. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? What, evil high school? No, but that does make complete sense. He did go to evil high school. That goatee. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to. And it was also the, the convertible that... And it was also a convertible that he himself rode in, in at the front of the...
let's just continue. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it'd be best if we took it slow with this new boy like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders? The coolest guy in school? The most famous student to ever attend the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? Your thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. Aha! You sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, he's not into me. I think I'm done. I think I'm done with this game for now. I don't think I can handle it anymore. Now you're telling secrets out of school, out of class? No. That's that's just too much. I, I don't think I can handle this anymore. I'm not in the right frame of mind for this. No. Okay. Um... No, no, no. I'm streaming this game. I should continue with this game. There's my mouse. There's my mouse. There it is. Ah. Oh. Okay, we're just gonna skip ahead. Okay, that's where we were. Well, if he's not into me, why do you tell me one of his secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her that you know a secret second ingredient, too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up. Secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're all alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about the passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said I was a powder creator from a super duper rare dried flower petals. And then if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Terry, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice. He met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me. The flavor was like unlike anything I've ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyway, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. Besides, I only know the one ingredient. And it's chicken! So I doubt I'd, it'd be very much use to anyone. Please, please, please. Would you? It would mean the world to me. No one has to know him from you or from Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know. How about... It was Eye of Newt. I know. Sounds like some sort of witch's potion, but what can you do? Eye of Newt. Wow. I am not sharing a secret, even if it is from an evil villain. He probably created the spork monster anyways. I don't trust that man. Try to light up imagining such a thing and you figure that you satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. Probably not good. 
Before you can ask her to confirm that he was definitely not testing secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom pills. Fill the air. He's on a horse. I think this game is breaking my brain today. Mm. Admire his majestic glory. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. I know. The horse is not evil. Horses do not know the concept of good nor evil. They're just horses. Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, he does a short horse stance before dismounting with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free into the countryside. Oh, great. You do realize that that is an invasive species to this area. Great, now I'm going to have to have a horse hunting season or something. You are struck by the sight of him. You lose the ability to speak coherently. And the fact that you're going to have to clean up all these petals. Oh, I didn't realize anyone was... He did. He totally did. Don't worry. He knows his way home. You attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words can't come out exactly right. Okay, this is... This is I can deal with. What a horse... Horseful beaut... What a horseful... What can... Yeah. Mm. Game breaking mind. Mind going. M mind. Mind going. What a horseful butte you have. I mean, what a horseful butte you have. Butte it. Butte, 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 butte. Being a good friend, Miriam attempts to cover for you. Oh, Hikaru just gets really nervous around people they like. What? This is not helping. I mean, they got food poisoning and were up all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. She gives you a wink and smile as to say, as if to say, situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals. Ayesh Leah and Van Van, the Van Van, are doing something bad. Bad. By the way they're hiding, you must know it must be something really bad bad. Like counterfeiting receipts bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad? Can we have a demon in the school? I want a demon in the school. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder. But he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you like you could be and mind your own wax, honey? Oh, I actually like that one. I like that one. Make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey. I like that one. That's a good one. That's a good one. I, 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 I like that. Just stop acting so immature. You immediately dress the rivals down for their immature behavior. Culinary school is to be respected. This kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. Now you've upset them. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. See, see, he's been in the kitchen. He knows. You finally get a look at what it was they were hiding. You recognize recognize it. It's a book. Just like the one you found after your encounter with this pork monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Ban Ban, who hides the book behind his back. 
I don't know what you're talking about. The book is a family heirloom and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't been just studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to a wall. And they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing. Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Hi, cutie. Clank must be running late. He's such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolt. Don't you insult my... Don't you insult Clank. Van Van Man Man. You better watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Look at him. Now he's mad. Who do you think you're talking to? I have never seen heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Uh oh. Get a blow. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Um. There we go. Sorry. I am such a pro at this. Where's the game? There's the game. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. <laughs> Protect me, Colonel Saddle. Henders, these crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Oh, so you admit it. Hmm? Hmm? We could be a cute couple, right? Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got a lof lofty career aspirations to focus. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal that it's true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He is a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rubber's furry dog belly. He loves it. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Surely you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. Yes, I can. I like to like the choice of who to date. I want to date Van Van the Man Man now, because... Ashley's just being mean to him. She can have Colonel Sanders. They're both evil. I mean, look at this goatee. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is only getting a tiny tray of food in front of you. Well, Hikaru? Naturally, this appears to, be, to you to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? Because of the shape it's baked in, you assume the dog biscuit is a treat made by Sprinkles. An example of his own culinary talent. Then. I can't go back, so. You. <sighs> Something is there. Spork Monster. Borko, what are you doing here? Not your time, my friend. An act of kindness has not been forgotten. You watch as your apron magically repairs itself. You won't have to live in that embarrassment anymore. Thank you, my friend, wherever you are. I'll take a glass of water. I'm not reading right now. Okay. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. 
Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim, and your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Step up and tell them you're on. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, so be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool. Fool. Poor Van Van. <laughs> Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Hikaru. I'll be watching your performance. Just as thing reached a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sporting court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Just then, a huge red light blasts in your face, flashing the words, Timer ready. Thank you for not flashing. I would not be able to handle timer flashing. That's what I'm talking about. Aru. I stand corrected. The hard way builds sol sol solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me, in case you're wondering. I hope it's me this message lifts, lifts you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had its chicken, you had its chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling like you can really impress him here again. Time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs out, you'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature? That's right. But how do you, without knowing that? Yeah, it's simple. Two hundred two hundred twelve degrees Fahrenheit, one hundred degrees Celsius. When I get through my furry belly, let that enticing offer motivate. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know his recipe exactly, but you have an idea. Eleven. That's right. You may not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're kind of headed in the right direction. Now that you've gotten some basic steps going, time to elevate your craft. I'm begging you to get it together. Next question. Uh, when you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. So, where does that come from? Small town where big dreams are born. This is your shot, and you're not going to miss it. Try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. S That's right. When they taste your cooking, they'll be so... Okay. You know that Colonel Sanders out of your corner of your eye? Believe in you, Hikaru. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoon... I couldn't even read it. One dessert, one dessert cookbook, which do you take? As soon as you focus on the challenge, you're falling behind. Ugh. You're really struggling to keep up. The next station over, Ashley is already playing elements dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into the sand whisker. As you do, the car gasps. I know you'd love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. You may not have any hands, but Hikaru does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy... Yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm focusing on cooking now. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer and rescue your dough before it's too overmixed. But you're not fast enough. Your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the spinning beaters. There's no way to, you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders had shame in shame. Bleh. What you often find is the easy way can turn out much, much more. Colonel Sanders, you're in a fast food restaurant. I am going to bet 
Now, I've never worked at a KFC before, but I'm going to bet that the potatoes that you have in your restaurant are made in a factory. That you don't trust your other chefs in your restaurants enough to know your eleven herbs and spices. So, you send them a pre-packaged mix that they just dunk chicken into and stick into a pressure cooker. You go for the easy way all the time. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. The battle is over. Can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Ah, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare you two on account of Hikaru's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you could at least tell us what you prepared? Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skipped straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wider way of delight, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Cardo on the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this cream of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. You know, if the questions were serious cooking questions, I probably would have gotten that quiz a lot easier. Just saying. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce over the top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquet atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry gelée. That's not a dessert. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the chocolate sauce. Uh, simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? Oh, you. As he places a sauce-covered finger to his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. I'm American, internalize. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flame. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash, and they fall off in your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Embarrassed and shamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. I'm thinking there was no way to win because those uh, questions going by so fast that we're basically just fantasi fantasizing over the character. No. Ah, the beautiful weather feels like an insult inside of you a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and they've decided to get married. Good for them. I'm going to take Fan Fan. I want Fan Fan the Man Man. What? He needs a friend. Maybe me, him, Miriam, and Clank can go hang out and, you know, we can get him to go to the gym and he can meet the woman of his dreams at the gym. And I can go find a good makeup artist to put new eyebrows on, even though eyebrows are completely overrated. I mean, look at me. No eyebrows here. No eyebrows here. See? No eyebrows. Humans in your eyebrows. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. No. No. Me, and, me Van Van, Miriam, and Clank are going to go going to go take Van Van to the gym and we're going to get him a new girl, get him a girl that, that can actually appreciate him for the for, for for the man he is. And then I can go find a good makeup artist and together together we can make some amazing makeup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You try to hide from him but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. And I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life, not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. 
Well, then, think again. I always was, I wasn't always the man you see before you enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome. Did Colonel Sanders come back from the grave to write this game? I'm thinking Colonel Sanders came back from the game to write this game. Or grave to write this game. Because honestly... Honestly. My goodness. Stroking a dead man's ego. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but failed as an abs obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I lost my business partner to a gunfight. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and well-kept beard and assume that I'm evil. I mean, I've thought I've got it all together and I'm evil, which is true now. See, I knew it, he was evil, but it all hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changed his focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. And his eyebrows catch on fire. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. You know, I should just, you know, do this to the game. Because I don't have eyes anymore. They burned. Sorry. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world. Make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Food! Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepared for the worst. No, the Spork Monster fixed my apron. It's not the Spork Monster. Sporko! It is I. I know I said I wouldn't be back after the whole fight to the death thing. Maybe you didn't really want to see me anymore, but... I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems? Am I right? Ah, oh, thanks, Borko. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can be a really rile person up. Yeah, if I saw that coming at me in the middle of the night, I'd be wondering what drugs I was on. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. Hey! I went to defend to start, and you and Borco attacked me. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to the school. Oh, sorry, Borco. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to the school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you know. You see, I don't believe it. You were a human once. Well, no, I was a golden retriever. But I was still a student until one day some mean kids with a magic spellbook cast a dark enchantment on me and I was forever transformed. Okay, I'm dating Borco now. Come on, Borco, let's go. Come on, come on, come on, Borco, let's go. Me and you. Just, just me and you, come on, let's go. Let's get out of here, Borco. Come on, Borco, let's go. Borco, Borco, come here. Come on, let's go. Let's go, Borco. Borco, Borco! Ah, Borco's not coming with me. A magic spell book? Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find some book, a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark, evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. Sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life, Hikaru. Together, I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. Personal infight? You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like. But it sounds like you're about to find out. 
stepping inside sand. Just admire that picture with me for a second. That is an amazing picture. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you live, looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining, never stop stopping. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish I've been tinkering with. I'm trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy, or something crispy. Both, perhaps. KFC's not really all that spicy, though. It's very neutral in its flavor. Now that you've got him right where you want him, should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? Yeah, screw it. I'm going to reveal my coleslaw recipe. You decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk, you talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. I guessed. And my grandma's coleslaw was better. What? My grandma's food was amazing. My grandma was an amazing cook. All grandmas are amazing cooks. They're far more amazing than Colonel Sanders could ever be as cooks. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. Magnificent. Together you chow down on the creamy slaw. Oh boy. Until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later. Think back on this moment. You could offer him to make him more, but he seems to be a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room, there are various items that you can look to look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. Okay. I can't even see what this is over here. Turn my brightness up on my computer. Still can't make it out. Looks like a YouTube play button. This must be where he keeps his secret recipe. You think for a moment. What number is important to a girl dawns on you? Nope. Uh. Well. I didn't think we'd get a close look at that picture. An adorable little baby boy car across the floor. From the goatee and the mustache combo he sports, you figure that this must be Colonel Sanders himself. So he was born evil. This is what an evil baby looks like. That, or maybe it's a drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? 
and probably the same person who made make the face the logo of the company they found it. Am I right? Dapping an item. Do I have to? The photo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices. Tap an item to discover more about the colonel. One of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing them. No, they don't. You look closely and see there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. Take a close look at the urn uh, sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read in the inscription. It says, Here lie all the ashes. Here lie the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Poor guy. Tap on an item. You gaze at the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then, the ghost of student pops up. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to revenge my death? No. I'm going to try to, to get, get um, Van Van, the man-man, um, away from Ashley so you know he can be happy for once in his life. Find him a nice girl at the gym. Wait, what? I've never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I'm going to tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see him in the middle of something? You open the window with a crack and the ghost of the student is swept out with a breeze. I think this is the jerkiest I've ever been in a video game. Ever. I'm feeling like a jerk right now. I'm so ashamed. I'm so ashamed. I'm so ashamed. Send a candle. You would pick it up to identify and try to identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake. Summer of 69. No, it's just one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's... Tap on an item to discover more about the kernel. A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize the hair... There in Justin isn't silver in color. It's actually made of spun silver. I knew it. He's a robot. An evil robot. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on the corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it's a chicken. Text, Jeremy. Must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was live. Oh, I thought it was going to come live. A little no-clip to chicken foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Tap an item. I'm tapping. Fine, I'll tap the glittery thing over here. You open the door of Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. Take one off what's hanging right on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. Give yourself a deep hug, breathing in this... Oh, gross. This is so wrong. So wrong. Oh my god. I laughed at this game when I found out about it. Now, this game's creeping me out. Ugh. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he's been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until they ask you why you're wearing his jacket. I usually don't loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Ah, oh, crap, the jacket. You've got to take it off. I tell him the truth. You confess. I think I've developed feet... I am not developing feelings for an evil robot with a goatee. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. Can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. 
Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Mm. Yes, Hikaru? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence! I feel sorry for that poor ghost student. I really do. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right, right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will tell truly all. Or, you know what I mean. This game's breaking my brain if I even had one, which I don't think I do. Today is the day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. Salt. In some jurisdictions, salt isn't even legal. But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges in the, into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated black breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. It's not chicken and waffles. If the game does something other than chicken and waffles... I will be greatly disappointed. And I will quit the game. Right then and there. I will. And I will call it for a stream if it's not chicken and waffles. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's... Nope. No. No. You're doing a fried chicken game. And you don't have chicken and waffles. You do. A fried chicken game. And you're not doing chicken and waffles. You're doing a fight chicken game and you're not doing chicken and waffles in a fried chicken game. How can I take you seriously? How can I? I can't. I'm done with this game. Burn this game. This game burns. It burns in the pits of hell where it from whence it came. Nope. 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 I'm done. I'm done with that game. Do I have anything on Steam I can play quickly? Nothing that I have that's downloaded on Steam that I can play quickly, at least. Um, I'm going to go look in the store. I'm going to see if there's anything. Okay. Any cool games that are, like, free? What's on my wish list? Nope, okay. Ah, oh, I wonder if there's a way of checking. Let's go free to... Well, let's see what it is in free to play. Because I cannot... No. No. Okay. Mm. 
Hmm. Okay, what do we got? That looks fun. Nothing really looks fun to play right now. I'm sorry, um, I just don't see anything fun to play. I was looking for like a quick little game to play, but nope. No quick little games there. Okay, so yep, that is what I'm going to call it then. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to start with Pokemon Legends Arceus. And uh, next week, we're going to go back to trying to make my head. Uh, maybe. It's going to take me a little bit. i got to figure out a good backup plan for the face. So, until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful Valentine's Day with somebody you care about. And I'll see you on the flip side. Bye. <laughs>